blessed evening to you. Pray and hope you're doing well. Pray and hope your family is doing well also. And as, as usual, let us continue to pray for each other. Let us continue to pray for all our loved ones. Let us continue to pray, especially for our children and the elderly ones, especially those who are sick and shutting. Last week we talked about uh, those who practice idolatry, those who uh, worship stones, statues, those who worship uh, the creature more than the creator, the creator, those who bow down to different things, whether it be an animal, whether it be a statue, or whether it be to even individual where they worship man and not God. This week we want to talk about the fearful. And as usual, we're going to be coming from Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8 read, But the fearful and believing and the abominable and the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all lives shall have their parts in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So here we have Revelation giving a list of those who will take part in the second death. Yes, the first death is us dying, our natural death. Uh, everyone who's alive now, as long as God tarry, will one day pass away, will one day die. So after this death, there will come a second death, after judgment, when we should stand before God and he will pass judgment on all. Those who was living for him, he will say, enter in. Thou good and faithful servant. Those who was not living for him, who was serving the devil, was bowing down to idols, he basically say, depart from me, I know you not. And many will say that on that day, but Lord, I did this in your name, I did that in your name. But again, he will say, depart from me, I never knew you. And those will take part in the second death. The second death which will be an eternal death where they spend eternity in hell with brimstone and fire. So that is the second death Revelation 21 and verse 8 is talking about. When God passes judgment on all and those who are not his will basically be cast into hell for all eternity. So this week we're going to continue and we just want to talk about the fearful. As stated in Revelation uh, 21 and verse 8. First, what is fearful? Now many of us are fearful of different things. Whether it be uh, those who are afraid of certain insects, those who are afraid of Different things. For me, there is things that I, I hate to travel on a bridge. I am very much fearful, but I'm always driving on a bridge. But as I cross the bridge, my focus is truly on God more so than ever. Because I'm like, God, you got to get me across this bridge. And I'm always driving in the inner lane, not the outer lane. And I always doing more than the speed limit. If it's an open road and if it's, there's traffic... I pray even harder. So, yes, that is one of my fear. Uh, so, we all have fear. But this is not what Revelation 21 and verse 8 is talking about. Uh, as I said, many of us have different fears. So, it's not the fear that you might be thinking about. That if I am afraid of a spider, then I won't be, make it into heaven. I, if I'm afraid of, of driving. There was a time where I was afraid of driving. Because my father died from a car accident. So, I was always fearful to get behind a wheel to say I'm going to drive. But I overcome that fear, thank be unto God, and friends and family who encourage me. So let us be mindful. It's not the fear that we might be thinking that uh, Revelation is 21 and verse 8 is speaking about. But as I go through, we'll see the different fear that Revelation 21 is talking about who will be cast into the second that will be part of the second that so let's go through it and let us look at what fearful mean uh, from the dictionary uh, it said full of fear apprehension or alarm afraid frightened without courage timid and that's from the Webster dictionary now the King James 
uh, Bible dictionary definition say, a painful emotion or passion excited by an expectation of evil or the apprehension of impending danger. And that is from the King James Bible Dictionary. Now, throughout the Bible, we will see the word fear and fearful used in a positive or a negative way. A positive way that we will see the word fear or fearful is when we see it in the reverence of God and, and His law. When we see it used in reverence to God and His word and His uh, laws, laws and precepts. Exodus 15 verse 11 said, the New King James said, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, doing wonders? And Deuteronomy 28, 58 to 59 warn us that if we are not careful to obey all the words of the law of the Bible, it said that we are to fear this glorious and fearful name, Jehovah thy God. Verse 59 on warn us of all the disaster that will happen, that will come upon us if we do not fear the name of God, if we do not reverence God, if we are not mindful of who He is and have the fear of Him in us, where we reverence Him, where we bow before Him and acknowledge Him that He is the true and living God. Now, when we have the fear of God, we will depart from evil. As Exodus 20 and verse 20 said from the Amplified Bible, He said, Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. For God had come in order to test you and in order that the fear of him that is a profound reverence for, for him will remain with you so that you do not sin. Proverbs 8 and verse 13 from the Amplified Bible as well said, The reverent, the fear and worshipful awe of the Lord includes the hatred of evil, the pride and arrogance and the evil ways and the uh, perverted mouth, I hate. Proverbs 16 and verse 6 said in New King James, In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity, and by the fear of the Lord, one depart from evil. So when we have the fear of God, we will depart from evil. We will not want to do anything that is evil because we have the fear of God in us. Also, we will see in the Bible that the fear of God is the, the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 9 and verse 10, NIV said, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And in Acts 9 and verse 31, we will see that the, the church have rest and were able to be multiplied because they walk in the fear of the Lord. Reading from the Amplified Bible again. So the church throughout Judea and Galilee and Samaria enjoy peace without persecution, being built up in wisdom, virtue, and faith, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort and encouragement of the Holy Spirit. It continues to grow in number. So when the church is reverent of God, live in reverence of God, live in fear of God, God will give the church peace. The God will have the church to multiply because they are in reverence of God. They are in fear of God. So these are just a few of the positive ways we will see fear and fearful use in Bible, in the reverence of the true and living God. Now the negative way that we will see fear and fearful use in the Bible are as follows. In Matthew 8, when Jesus was in the ship with his disciple and he was sleeping, and there arose a great tempest in the sea that the ship was covered with the waves. Verse uh, 25 go on to say that the disciple came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, lest we perish. And verse 26, And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O he of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. Yes, the disciple became fearful when they saw the danger that surround them. As many of us are at times when we see danger, we become very fearful of the danger that are surrounded us at times. Again, we will see the disciple of Jesus in Matthew chapter 14 cry out in fear when they saw Jesus walking on the water towards them on the boat. Verse 26 in the Amplified Bible said, When the disciples saw him, walking on the sea, they were terrified 
and said, It is a ghost, and they cry out in fear. And verse 27 said, But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. So here we see the disciple then was using fear and fearful because they thought they were in danger. Uh, and they thought uh, when they saw Jesus walking in water, uh, it was a ghost. But no, Jesus said, do not be afraid. It is him. It is him. Now, as we continue to read, we will see that Peter was walking on the water after Jesus bid him to come. But he became frightened when he saw the effect of the wind and the, began to sink. Again, he cried out unto Jesus and said, Lord, save me. Are we crying out to Jesus to save us when we become fearful of what's surrounding us, when we see dangers, when we see the things that are happening in the world? Are we crying out to Jesus to save us as Peter did when he was sinking after he see the, the, the winds blowing and the, just the, the danger that he saw from the wind blowing? He become very frightened and cried out to Jesus, save him. And Jesus did save him as he stretched forth his hand and pulled him up. Jesus will do likewise for each and every one of us, that he will save us if we cry out to him with a sincere heart. He will save us from in danger, from danger. So cry out to Jesus when you are in danger. Cry out to Jesus from a heart of fear uh, that you know will just have us to reverence him and to cry out to him. Again, many of us are like Peter that are sinking deeper and deeper into sin but are very fearful to cry out because of to Jesus to save us because of what? Pride. Pride will have us not cry out to Jesus. Let us not be prideful. Let us not be fearful to call out to Jesus when we are falling deeper and deeper into sin because we will get to the point where we cannot cry out anymore. It will be too late for us to cry out to Jesus to him to save us. So don't be prideful. Don't be fearful to cry out to God uh, to save us when we are falling deeper and deeper into sin. Now, Revelation 21 and verse 8, reading it again, it said, But the fearful and believing and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, who are the fearful that will be punished with the second death and, and in hell for all eternity? Now, let us look at what uh, this is saying. There are those of us who are fearful to be labeled as our associate as Christian. We are afraid to tell people that we are serving the true and living God. We are afraid to name the name of Jesus Christ. But Luke 12 and verse 9 tell us that if we deny Jesus, before men, that he will deny us before the angel of God. Verse 9 said, But he that denied me before men shall be denied before the angel of God. But when we look at verse 8, this is what it said, Also, I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angel of God. So, for God to confess, for Jesus to confess us before the angel of God, we are too willing to be able to confess him before men. We cannot be afraid to name the name of Jesus. We cannot be afraid to say that we are Christian. We cannot be afraid uh, to tell people about Jesus. No, if we deny him, he will deny us. So let us not deny Jesus Christ, but be bold enough to say, yes, I stand for, for Jesus Christ. I stand on the word of God. I stand for the true and living God. When we allow fear and condemnation from friends, family, and even co-workers cause us to be ashamed to name the name or associate as Christian, then the Lord will be ashamed of us. Or if we are hanging out with friends or a different ones that sometimes we might hang out with and sometimes we might see them want to do something that is sinful. And many times we are very afraid to say it is wrong if we should not do it. But because of fear, We'll allow fear to crep in and keep us from saying, no, I do not want any part of that. I do, you should not do that. But we go along with it because of fear, because we do not want our friends or our peer to label us as uh, 
church girl or church boy or you know just uh, as a Christian but we will go along with those who are doing evil those are the fearful that Revelation 21 and verse 8 is speaking about um, when we read Matthew 5 from verse 12 to tell us that blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness sake for there is the kingdom of heaven verse 11 said blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kind of evil against you falsely for my sake and verse 12 tell us that we are to rejoice we are to rejoice when they do these things so we cannot be afraid uh, be fearful for people going to label us as church girl, church boy, I, I, a Jesus uh, freak. No, I'd rather be a Jesus freak than to end up in hell. So don't be fearful. Let us not be fearful to tell those who are doing wrong that they are doing wrong. Do not go along with friends or family member who you see doing wickedness and go along because you're afraid for them to label you as Jesus freak. All right. Uh, as we said, when they persecute us, we are to rejoice. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for a great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecute the prophet who were before you. So if they persecute the prophet and those before us, they will also persecute us. And we should consider it a great joy when we are being persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. Acts 5 and verse 21 tell us that the apostle left the council rejoicing because they suffered disgrace for the name of Jesus Christ. Read in Acts uh, 5 and verse 41 from the King James. It said, And they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Are we rejoicing when we are being persecuted? When we are being disgraced for the, the name of Jesus Christ, we should rejoice to know that we are count worthy to be persecuted and to be disgraced for his name. We cannot be afraid or fearful to name the name of Jesus Christ, even if it means death. So even if there is life and death before you, don't be afraid to stand up, even if it means that we're going to die for the name of Jesus Christ. Many of the apostles were martyred because they stand up for Jesus Christ. They did not back down from the God that they serve, from the, the God that they believe in. They believe in God, they believe in Jesus Christ, and they did not back down from it. And therefore, many of them mart were martyred because of their belief. So don't be afraid to die for the name of Jesus. Also, we have those of, whom, of us who are fearful to call sin as it is. We can see where many pastors are afraid to preach against sin in their churches. All because they do not want to be offend they don't want to offend anyone. We see it all the time where you might go to a church and even watching a service on television or YouTube or wherever and the pastor is afraid to call sin sin. They are afraid to call or uh, those who are living in sin. But we cannot be afraid. We cannot be fearful to name sin as it is. Those who are living adulterous lifestyle, those who are living homosexual lifestyle, those who are living fornication lifestyle, those who are lying, those who are stealing, those who are doing all type of wickedness are in the church, and yet the church is not calling out. I'm not saying for you to embarrass, but you have to preach against these things in the church. You cannot... Uh, on Sunday worshiping God and then Monday to Saturday you're living like the devil. No. If we're going to live for God, we got to live for God 24-7. We cannot have it both ways. We cannot serve God and mama at the same time. We only could serve the true and living God. And churches are, are afraid. Pastors are afraid to preach against certain things. Why? Because they do not want to lose members. They do not want to lose that collection that's coming in from certain members. Some of those big tithers are people who are living a sinful life, but because they do not want, they don't want to lose these members, they don't preach against sin. So those are the fearful that Revelation 21 and verse 8 is speaking about. Those who are, uh, those who don't want to call sin as it is, because of the fear of losing members are losing a certain amount of uh, money from the collection plate but we are to preach against these things there are those who will be fearful to re reject the mark of the beast now in revelation uh 14 verse uh 9 
to 10. He said, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angel and in the presence of the Lamb. So there is going to come a time where many will be fearful of not taking the mark. Why? Because they cannot buy or sell certain things. They cannot provide for their family. And therefore, because of fear, they will take the mark of the beast. They will take that number, 666, on their forehead or on their, fore, on their ha or hand. We are to be mindful of who God is. We are to be mindful of the God that we serve. We are to be mindful of the God we believe in. The God of the impossible. The God who can do all things. The God that are able to do the impossible for any one of us. If we truly stand up for him, he will stand up for us. So let us stand up for Jesus Christ. He will stand up for us. Let us be mindful of what Matthew 8, uh, 10 and verse 28 said. He said, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So who are we to fear? God. We cannot fear man, what man will do unto us. We cannot fear uh, to take the mark of the beast because we might feel we feel that like we're going to starve from not eating. God will provide for us. So let us be mindful. Therefore, Matthew 6, verse 25 to 34 said, Therefore I say unto you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It is not is not life more than food and the body more than the clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in bond, yet your heavenly Father feed them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his statue? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lily of the field, how they grow. They neither tall nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O he of little faith? Verse 31. Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father know that you need all these things. But seek he first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Let us not worry about tomorrow. Let us not worry about what we're going to eat or drink, but just to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, that he will make a way for us, that he will provide for us. We are to be mindful that God said to us in Philippians 4 and verse 19, he said, he said, He shall supply all our need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. By who? By Christ Jesus. We are to be mindful that the Lord used the raven to feed to bring bread and meat each morning even to his servant, Elisha, so he can eat. And if God do so for him, he will do for us. God is warning us not to be, a, be fearful of men and what they might or will do to us for his name's sake. But we are to show reverence unto him. We are to walk in fear of who he is, the sovereign one, the all-powerful one, the all-knowing one, the supreme God. He's the one we are to be afraid of, to be fearful of. And that fearful is not to say, I'm afraid of God. And no, it's a reverence unto God. Again, the fearful are those who are ashamed to name the name of Jesus Christ. Those who are ashamed to say that they are a Christian. Those who are ashamed to walk away from taking the mark of the beast because of their, their fear that they might not able to buy or to sell or to provide for their family and therefore they will walk 
they will take the mark of the beast. The faithful are those who will go along with sinful people and do wrong without speaking out against it. The faithful are those who will not take a stand for righteousness and for holiness. Those who are afraid to call sin as it is, sin is sin. doesn't matter what shape, form, or uh, color, sin is sin. If you're lying, stealing, whoremonger, it is a sin. The simplest thing that is against God is a sin. That does not go along with God's law. And his commandment, it is a sin. Those who are afraid of persecution, those who are not willing to die for the name of Jesus Christ, we must be willing to die for the name of Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid of the martyr. Be martyr for Christ. There will come a time when many will be martyr for Christ because they believe in who they trust in, as many have done so in the past. And even so now, in some uh third world country where many are dying because they named the name of Jesus Christ. I will not refuse to bow down to any other name but the name of Jesus Christ. And therefore many are being killed, per, uh, ex executed for the name of Jesus Christ. Are we willing to be those one as well, like those one as well? Those who are not willing to walk away from sin and from doing evil. Those who are Those who are not willing to walk away from evil and the wickedness of their heart. Those are the fearful. We see it happening every day where people just more and more indulge into the wickedness of this world. They want to do the things that is more pleasing to the flesh than is pleasing to God because of fear of what people might say or do to them or think of them. Those are some of the fearful at Revelation 21 and verse 8 is speaking of, about. Let us therefore fear the Lord God Almighty and depart from sin. The Bible had a lot more to say about this topic, but you know, for time's sake, I'm just going to stop here. And please don't be fearful of what man might think or say of you because you name the name of Jesus Christ. There is no other name to name but the name of Jesus Christ. Do not be fearful that you might be labeled as a Jesus freak. So what? If you are named Jesus freak, count it as a blessing, count it as a joy. Rejoice for that namesake, Jesus' name. There is no name sweeter, there is no name better than the name of Jesus Christ. So if we are not willing to take up our cross daily and follow him, why is the purpose of calling ourselves a Christian? We must be willing to lay down our life for him, just as he laid down our life for, him, for us. May God bless you. May God continue to strengthen each and every one of us. Let us not be fearful. As Revelation 21 and 8 stated, the fearful will have their second part in the lake of fire forever. And no one wants to see their loved ones. None of, I don't want to see anyone end up in hell. And therefore, I'm asking you, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Turn away from the wickedness of your heart. Turn away from doing sin. Turn away from doing evil. And turn to God. Not be fearful of anyone but God himself. Walk in reverence of who God is. God bless you. Stay safe. Join me next week as I continue with Revelation 21 and verse 8. Talking about the liars who will have their part in the second death as well. As I pray, Eternal Father, most righteous and loving God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for being loving. We thank you for being faithful. Thank you, O God, for your reminder, O God, even in this, O God, that the fearful will have their part in the lake of fire, O God, Father, which is the second death, Father God. And Father God, is not those who are afraid of something, O God, are afraid to do certain things, O God, but those who are afraid to say they are belong to you, O God, those who are afraid to take up the name of Jesus Christ, those who are afraid to speak out against wickedness, those who are afraid to speak out against sin, O God, those who are afraid to call sin as it is, O God, those who are afraid, O God, to O oh God, to chastise those who are living sinful life, O oh God. Even in the church, O oh God, we see where many pastors, O oh God, are afraid, O oh God, because they do not want to be labeled, O oh God, mislabeled, O oh God. But Father God, there is no mislabeling those who name the name of Jesus Christ. There is no better label to have than to have the name of Jesus Christ labeled to you, to oneself, Father God. So I thank you, O oh God, that you are mindful of us, O oh God, to warn us, O oh God, to depart from this fearful mindset, O oh God, 
that the enemy is trying to put within us, O oh God, to walk in fear, O oh God, but is not in fear of you, O oh God. So, Father God, I pray right now, God, that we learn to walk in fear of you, O oh God. As your word said, O oh God, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom, O oh God. So, Father God, I pray, O oh God, that we acknowledge you, O oh God, as the sovereign one. We acknowledge you, O oh God, as the supreme one and bow before you, O oh God, and reverence you, O oh God. So, Father, I thank you, O oh God, for loving us so much that you are mindful of us, O oh God, in your word, O oh God. You gave us your word, O oh God, for us to read, O oh God, and to live by it, dear God. Live by your word, O oh God, because if we follow your precepts and, and command, O oh God, God, we shall have life and have it more abundantly, O oh God. But many want this abundant life in this world, O oh God. And knowing that, God, this world is just a temporary world, O oh God. There going to come a time when this world is no more, O oh God. And then, Father God, we have to stand before you, O oh God, to be judged, O oh God. And, Father God, you will say, Depart from me, I know you not, O oh God. And we will be cast into the lake of fire, O oh God, for all eternity, O oh God, if we do not know you as Lord and Savior, O oh God. If we do not walk in reverence of who you are, O oh God. If we we did not walk in fear of you, O oh God. God, we, our part will be, O oh God, in hell, O oh God. And Father God, no one want to be in hell. As much as they might think, O oh God, hell is not real, O oh God, but there will come a day, O oh God, when they will be able to stand before you, O oh God, and you will say, depart from me, O God. And then in hell, O God, they will cry out, but God, there was no time, O God. It will be too late, O God, for them to be saved, O God. So now, even now, God, even as Peter, who was sinking, O God, when he see the, the, the wave and the winds, O God, and he cry out to you, O God. So let someone cry out to you, O God, who are sinking deeper and deeper into sin, Father God. Let they cry out, Father God, from a desperate heart unto you, O God. And I know you will save them, O God. So have your way right now, God in the life of your people and even oh god we lift up our loved ones before you oh god our children our elderly ones oh god those who are sick oh god many people are sick from different illness oh god those who might have a stroke oh god i put before you oh god that you'll touch heal and deliver strengthen oh god 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 i pray right now that you'll touch mine father god those who have kidney problem oh god i pray oh god that you'll touch right now god those who have kidney failure god pray oh god that you restore right now god those who are having heart problem oh god touch right now father in the name of Jesus. God, those who are battling different uh, form of cancer, oh God, I pray right now, God, that you will heal, oh God. Many people call, oh God, cancer the big C, oh God, but God, your C is bigger than this C, Father God. You are the great C, oh God. Father God, the letter C, oh God, Christ Jesus. And Father God, we put everything into your hand right now, God, that you, oh God, will cover each and every one of these uh, individually, oh God, but collectively, oh God, whatever sickness that they might be battling, oh God, whether it be kidney, heart, oh God, liver, oh God, lungs problem, oh God, whatever form of cancer, oh God, brain tumor, oh God, low God, cancer, oh God, of the colon, oh God, and Father God, prostate cancer, oh God, we pray right now, God, skin cancer, oh God, we put them before you right now, God, that you will heal right now, God, and let them have joined their faith with you this morning, this evening, this afternoon, oh God, this night, dear God, and say, Father, I believe that you are a healer divine, I believe that you can heal me, I surrender my life to you, I give my life to you, I turn everything over to you, I cry out to you, as Peter, cry out to you, save me, Lord Jesus, and you will save mine body and spirit, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So have your way right now, God, in the life of individually, O oh God. Father God, I thank you and I bless you, God. Touch those who are mentally sick, O oh God. Touch their mind, Father God. Restore mind, Father God. You are the mind regulator, O oh God, so you can heal right now, God. Father God, as I join my faith with you, O oh God, Father God, as I, Father God, your spirit intertwined with my spirit, O oh God. Father God, I pray right now, God, that you just touch your people, O oh God, and a whole, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way right now, God, I pray. Father God, we thank you, O oh God. Continue to protect our children, O oh God. God, as they go from day to day, oh God, from uh, as they travel to school, work, or wherever they may be going, oh God, keep them safe, oh God. Remember, oh God, every family, oh God, that hear this message, oh God. I pray that you will touch each and every one, oh God. I pray, oh God, that someone is crying out to you on behalf of a loved one, oh God, that you'll hear them, oh God. Father God, whether it be a friend, oh God, whether it be a father, mother, oh God, a sister, brother, oh God, a niece or nephew, a grandchild, Father God. I pray right now that you hear and answer their cry, Father God. Remember those who are still, so oh God, suffering from the different disaster, oh God, the different hurricane, Father God. Pray, oh God, that you make provision for them. 
Make ways for them, O God. Open doors for them, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, you are sovereign. And Father God, I thank you, O God, that you are the supreme one, O God. And we bow to you. We look to you. And we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Pray this is a blessing to you. And if it is, share it with someone. In Jesus' name I ask. God bless. Thank you.